faith and testimony for a lot of years now. Um, and I'm really grateful for this privilege because what it's, what's happened is it's made me get on my knees more again and realise that somewhere along the line in my Christian walk I kind of got a little bit complacent and when you get complacent you know you can easily forget and the Lord says to build remembrance stones you know it's very important so really even though you know sometimes you think we've come to give I'm not getting nothing I know I'm getting more than <laughs> giving but um I just come from uh, my mum uh, she's Irish and my dad he was African uh, he was my stepdad, and I just um, remember growing up um, quite unhappy, really. Um, um, I was, think that was mainly due to the rejection of my father, who was my stepfather, but I didn't um, find that out till I was 28 years old. So at the time, from a young baby, I just presumed that um, there was something completely wrong with me because, you know, I thought it was my real father, initial father, he's like, you know, he's the God <laughs> in your life, especially as a child, he's the one you look up to, everything that your parents do is right. And so I thought, um, he's rejecting me, he doesn't, you know, he never spoke a word to me, I can believe it, and living in the same house and everything, he just didn't. Um, but I think I was just kind of, you know, he loved my mum greatly and, um, I think maybe I was just in the way, you know, she came with this little child and I now think it was just, you know, at that time, I was just extra kind of baggage for him and by the time maybe he had realised that maybe it would have been a good idea to have a, you know, a relationship, daughter to father relationship, it was too late kind of thing, you know. But he's died many years now, but um, growing up, um, so I just... Uh, that I think that caused, I do know, that caused deep, deep, deep rejection. And um, uh, I was young, I was about four maybe, when I was um, sexually abused. And that went on for a period of time. We lived, me and my mum and father lived in the house and a um, person from the basement of the house would take me and, you know, take me down and sexually abuse me and I remember just crying and not being able to tell my mum and I think like as a child then I just again it was you know um, well, they're the adult and uh, you know I'm just a child very you know completely terrified and I didn't know how to tell anyone really I didn't know even maybe you were supposed to or just scared that people wouldn't believe so um, that was um, not a good thing either, so I th that contributed to, um, you know, just a lot of uh, hurt and pain and c confusion and stuff growing up because it obviously never got dealt with because I didn't tell my mum until many years later. And then um, um, at one point my mum, in those days, I'm 48 now and I was born in 1961, so in those days it was hard for all right women to um, have, you know, his, uh, black kids, there was a lot of doors shut in your face and stuff and I remember when she went into um, hospital to have one of my brothers, I have three brothers, um, I, she, I was put to, I think it was a foster family, yeah it was a foster family, um, I think maybe my mum took me back in the evenings, I can't remember, forgive me because it is, you know, I haven't been over my testimony so I said for many years, so please forgive me but I know that, anyway, this lady um, she had two white daughters and we'd sit at the table eating dinner but I wouldn't. She'd put me under the table while her daughters and her would sit at the table and they'd throw me food under the table like a dog, you know, and just be laughing and kicking me while they were eating around the table. And again, that contributed again to that deep rejection of being worthless and stuff, you know, I didn't know at the time. I was, I was very, very young, maybe it was around the time of the abuse, I think four, five at the eldest, and, um, uh, the eldest. and I remember one day the lady, she was really quite wicked, you know, and just took a real perverse um, pleasure in, you know, hurting me and abusing me physically and mentally, and one day she called me over and she had these uh, marigold gloves on, and she had a bucket of steaming water, and she called me over, terrible kind of grin over her face, and I just knew what was going to happen, you know, she was going to hurt me and um, I just remember being so petrified and 
I didn't want to go and, and, and you know, I don't know, you know, that feeling of hopelessness. There was just no, um, I had nothing, I had to go. I was a child, there was nothing that could save me around. So she grabbed me and she uh, put my hand and held my hand in it. I just remember screaming and I remember great big blisters. I mean, I still have a real prominent scar to this day. Big blisters up here. And I just, all I then remember is hospital, my mum, and I remember the doctors um, cut, <laughs> cutting this blister. I don't, and I was thinking, wow, why doesn't that hurt? You know, I don't know what, but anyway, that's all I, I kind of remember. And I know that the lady um, obviously most probably said that I put my hands, I don't know what she did, it was an accident, whatever. And again, it was not till many years later that I told my mum, because I, I was just, um, I don't know why I didn't tell her. I just, we didn't, you know, as a child, again, these adults are all chatting and blah, you know, whatever, and you don't get heard, really, or well, maybe I thought I wouldn't get heard, or maybe no one properly asked me, I don't know. But anyway, many years later, and of all that, that had gone on, um, I just grew up really kind of um, bitter and a bit angry and stuff, and... Um, very angry and hateful to, you know, I hated my father because I was just so s confused about that. And I got to, I was angry with my mum because I thought, well, she could have stopped it with my dad, you know, and not let, let him treat me like that, but she didn't. But I think now in hindsight, which maybe she just didn't know, maybe she thought that was the right thing to do, you know, he was how he was acting. And she brought me up with good morals and stuff, you know, and don't steal and politeness and all that. So I thank her, you know, for that. But, um, um, so anyway, when I was in school, as soon as I left the house, I used to go like, the, I was timid, frightened indoors, but as soon as i go out of the house, I was really angry and verbal and screaming and, you know, um, wanting to be one of the gang and um, kind of bullish in a way. Um, all that pent up frustration, you know, came out when I left the house. And so, um, carried on like that, quite di uh, distraction in school and everything, always wanting people to notice me and always wanting to be the centre of attention simply because, um, yeah, because I never got noticed by my dad. And um, when, I, when I, left, I, I left school and I felt so worthless, I knew that I'd never get a job, I'd be the one to not get a job and my other friends were so beautiful and pretty and I just thought this was my lot and I'd never, you know, nothing, I was worthless, useless for anything and so I left school and the people, I, I, I left school but at that time I also ran away from home and um, I ran away from home and when I did it was just, um, it wasn't, nothing was planned or anything like that, I just decided that I just can't stand this anymore and I ran. And um, when I ran, I ran to the people who were like me, broken, hurting people, to the gangs on the street and to the people that would um, accept me, which were people like myself, you know, broken and hurting and stuff. I just wanted, now I know I wanted acceptance, so I ran to those people and my friends then, and we just kind of lived a life of um, drink, drugs, um, and then I started getting, um, you know, I'd hang around with a street gang and we'd be fighting the other neighbouring boroughs and stuff like this. And I was known as very um, hard, they'd say in that day, those days, you know, for a girl. And that was, oh, great. You know, I got a lot of esteem from that. And that's where I got my meaning, really, you know, and people, wow, well, look at her. She's really, you know, she can look after herself. She's tough and so on. Like, that felt, it felt awesome and I was so accepted, you know, that's how it felt. And so this is great, go one step further. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if I went to prison? You know, then they'd really, people would really um, look up to me and stuff. And it sounds crazy, it really does to people maybe who've never been in that life. But when you, or felt like that, but when, you know, where do you get your uh, meaning or your love from? You know, you have to get it from somewhere. And that's where I got mine, that's where I found mine.